What is going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Steven here and welcome back to new clone review. Now today we'll check out this LG G3 clone which I have got from a friend to review for you. Now he has got it from Live Mall from China and today I want to show you guys what are the differences between the real one and the fake one and how to spot the fake one so you won't get tricked on the internet. So let's get directly started and let's have a look at the box. Now here you can see the box of the fake LG G3 and from the box you cannot tell the difference. It looks exactly like the original box, but yeah, if you just see pictures on eBay or somewhere on the internet, you cannot tell if it's the original or not. Also here on the back side, you just see the specs of the real LG G3. So we have your knock code, but on the fake one, knock knock, who is there? Nobody, because this bullshit is not working. We have some very poor specs, like instead of Quad HD, we have just HD. Instead of the Snapdragon processor, we just have a MTK6582 SoC. And also the whole build quality doesn't feel like the real one. So those products are counterfeit in China. That's why I will destroy the sample here after we have done the review. And yeah, it was just a gift from a friend, so I don't really care. And yeah, here at the bottom you can see this is definitely the fake one, but the box looks exactly like the original one. So you cannot tell the difference if you just see the box online. But yeah, the specs of the clone are actually very poor. But yeah, you get what you pay for, so for $150 you will get a quad-core, 1GB of RAM, HD screen, a bit poor build quality, and yeah, that's how the phone looks like. Now let's have a look at all the accessories which we can find inside of the box. Now first of all, it came with a power plug adapter, but actually I don't need it, because the charger here comes with the power socket connector for my country. And here we can see travel adapter with the LG logo. But this one here feels so lightweight and so cheap. Yeah, I won't trust this. And here you can also see the LG sticker, which is not even straight on this device here. So the charging accessories feel very, very cheap. And it outputs um, a really strange value. So we just have 0.4 amps at 5.6 volts. Maybe the original also comes with the same specs. I don't know. But yeah, I would change the charging accessories. Then it also comes with a micro USB cable to connect it to the computer. It looks quite okay, just a bit deformed, as you can see right over here. Also included in the box, a LG quick starter guide. I'm pretty sure this is just copy pasted from the original one. And here you can see, yeah, it comes completely in English. But just to mention it once again, this is not a real LG G3. So this is a clone from China and doesn't reflect LG's build quality in any way. Now here you can see the remote with the microphone of the headset and those clones always come with headsets. And yeah, the build quality of those things is very poor. So they are very lightweight, here you can see the microphone. The 3.5mm connector is mostly gold plated, but also the quality, the whole sound quality, if you just have a look at the speakers, they are very lightweight, everything plastic here, they don't sound really good. So you cannot compare this with the original headset and you can also get those fake headsets for something like $2 or $3 on Amazon. Alright, so this is everything which you can find inside of the box and now I would say let's have a look at the fake LG G3 from China. Now I just want to tell you that I don't like the design of the LG G3. So I don't own the original one because yeah, I don't like the design. And I've just compared it with pictures on the internet, and yeah, it looks very identical to the real one. And if you don't know how to spot fake phones, then you'll probably won't notice a difference. Here in the left top corner, you can see the front facing camera. We have here all the sensors. We have here a status LED and the speaker. And the display looks pretty good. I mean, you can definitely see a difference to Quad HD. You can really see it. But yeah, if you just have a quick look at the display, if you just see pictures on the internet, you won't see a difference because it looks pretty sharp because yeah, it's HD on that display size, which is the actual size of the LG G3. It looks also okay. It must not be quad HD. Now the problem with those clones is that they are not OGS. As you will see a bit later, I will show you a quick demonstration. Here on the back side, you can see all the things which make the LG G3 the LG G3. And we have here the back button, so we have here the power button, volume up and volume down button. LG logo, but yeah, fake one. And here we can see the laser autofocus, which is also fake, so this is just a piece of plastic with no function. And the dual LED flash, which is actually very good on the clone, I didn't expect this. 
Here at the bottom on the left side we have the speaker and the speaker quality, terrible as always. Now you can remove the back cover right over here. And yeah, the thickness, everything, um, the dimensions are actually one to one. Except of the battery, I think the battery is not the same size. Then here at the bottom you have the 3.5mm headphone jack for the headset. Then here you also have a bottom microphone for calls which is working and the micro USB port. At the top we have a fake IR blaster and a fake microphone. So both things here are totally useless. Now yeah, the frame, plastic, just like the real one I think. And that's basically it. Surprisingly, the whole operating system is very similar to the LG G3 and with that I mean the buttons at the bottom and all that stuff. But yeah, let's remove the back cover because on the real one it's also removable. And it's a plastic back cover which bends a lot but yeah, it doesn't break. And in here we can see all the components. Now here it says lithium ion battery pack 3000 mAh. This is absolutely not true. But I will talk about the battery a bit later. Now here you can see a dual slot. So just like on the Galaxy S5, we have here one SIM card slot, so this is a single SIM, single standby device, with a micro SD card slot. Here we have golden contacts, which I think are for the wireless charging back cover on the real one of NFC or something. But on the fake one, they don't work. Now yeah, we can easily remove the battery, but before we do this, let's have a look here at the speaker. So this looks also just like on the real one. Then here's the battery, easily removable, and under the battery there should actually be a sticker with the IMEI number. But here I cannot see it, so no model number, no IMEI, and yeah. Let's have a quick look here at the battery pack. And the battery pack is a total joke. So you can see LG, BL, 53, whatever. And everything you can see here on the battery pack is fake. Now the real capacity, I guess something below 2000 milliamp hours because the battery lifetime totally sucked. And here you can see the pins, but um, somebody told me that the size of the battery is not exactly the same like on the real one. But yeah, the battery is removable and the battery just sometimes went dead, so it dropped from 30% to zero, so it's either wrong calibrated or the battery is just broken, shorted cells or whatever. And yeah, this is um, how the LG G3 here looks like. And now to turn it on, you have to press the power button on the back side, just like on the real one. And let's just do it. And yeah, it takes some time until it boots up. So this is really strange. Let's just try it once again. And yeah, guys, trust me, you will see a lot of LG G3 reviews on YouTube, but there are no quality differences. So all those clones are made by some random manufacturer. Here you can also see the notification LED, and yeah, the manufacturer is unknown because they are counterfeit, okay? So there is no official manufacturer. And sometimes they use different hardware, like different LCDs, different touchscreens, but the SOC and all the rest is usually the same, and also the whole performance. Now yeah, we're now here in Android, and I would say, let's just have a look at the whole operating system, let's see how it performs, and then let's have a look at the settings and all that stuff. So let's just go. So here's a close up on the Android operating system. We're now here on the home screen and yeah, we have different pages. The icons just look like on the real one. And yeah, it feels quite snappy because those clones are not running the dual core chipset anymore. Those clones are running the MTK6582 quad core, which is quite okay in low end phones. Now, I'm used to Qualcomm or the new 64-bit generation, so for me it feels a bit slow, but for the casual user, it's maybe okay. Now, what I want to show you regarding the build quality. This is not OGS, so you can see if you just press a bit harder on the screen, you can see some waves here under the screen, and this is because there is a lot of space between the glass, so the digitizer, and the display. And digitizer and display are two components, not just like on the Galaxy S5, one thing. And this space is not equal over the whole length of the phone, so this can also cause ghost touches and a lot of more. And if you just push gently on the screen, you will see nothing on the screen. But if you push harder, then you will see those waves, which you cannot see, for instance, on the Galaxy Note 4. We're now here in the settings, and you see all of the settings, we have here a theme which looks exactly like on the LG G3. And I've just seen pictures, so maybe please correct me if something looks different. Then here we are now in About the Phone. And here you can see this phone is definitely running Android KitKat. And I've also tested it, so I've installed the Google Camera application, which only works on KitKat phones. And this works perfectly well. So definitely KitKat running on the clone. 
But yeah, um, there's also a wireless update, but don't expect to see any update. So here you can see version 1.0, and guess why? Because there are no updates. And also if you check for updates, it will just tell you up to date. And there are some ROMs on need ROMs or ported ROMs, and they improve a few things, but usually you won't get any software support on those clones. Here under general you can see my accounts, so here you can add accounts, guest mode, also just like on the LG G3. Then here device manager, all that useless stuff, but let's have a look at apps. Because here we can see which apps are running in the background and also the RAM consumption. But unfortunately, just like on the most of the clones, this is fake too. So here we have 1GB of RAM used, but the whole device only has 1GB of RAM. And yeah, well, so 1.5GB of free RAM is total bullshit. This is fake and you actually cannot see here the real RAM consumption. But what I have to say, um, it feels quite snappy, so the RAM consumption will be something like 600 megabytes. Also the ROM here pretty clean, I've scanned it with GData, I just wanted to make sure that this is really free of spyware and all that stuff, and yeah, it's definitely clean. Now here you can see battery stats. And yeah, battery is a total joke on this device. Now I was outside filming, um, 30% I just thought let's record the camera, and I started the camera, phone went dead. And there was just a jump, boom, it was dead. So the battery, um, I mean shorted cells or maybe the capacity is wrong or it's wrong calibrated, I also tried to calibrate the battery and yeah, it didn't help. So battery lifetime is yeah not really good. So six to seven hours, then it went dead. But not only the RAM is fake, so also the ROM is fake, as you can see. 32 gigs are not true. This phone comes with eight gigabytes of ROM and yeah, you can extend it with micro SD cards if you want to up to 32 gigs. Now here at the bottom we have all the buttons like menu button, home button and back button just like on the real LG G3. And also if you're in a full screen application you just have to swipe down and then you get the buttons. This works perfectly nice. And also air browse. Now I was really impressed that this is even working. But it's not only working, it also works very nice as you will see later. Just smart screen is not working or it is working in some way but totally fucked up because if you watch a movie then it just stops the movie after some time while you're watching it and this is really strange. So here we have display settings, LED indicator for MMS or something, so notifications, security settings, wallpapers which are by the way the same like you can find on the LG G3, Wi-Fi which is working okay so let's just see if it can connect. Now, yeah, the signal, as you can see, fair. On some other phones, like the Ulu Phone B Pro or something, I get good. And yeah, same router, same spot, just a different phone. So you can see, um, the Wi-Fi signal is definitely good, it's working, but it could be better. Now, that was Wi-Fi, so let's go back here. We also have Bluetooth, so let's just see if it finds my other device here. So yeah, that's my iPhone right over here. So, Bluetooth definitely working. Alright, so let's go back here, data usage, location, and under more you have all the stuff like um, tethering and all that stuff which you can find in advanced network settings. Now basically that were the settings of the LG G3 clone, and now let's have a look at all the other features. Alright guys, so just as I've told you, the whole operating system really feels and looks like on the LG G3. It just lags from time to time, also after the boot up. Then if you have many apps on the home screen, then you have a 30 second lag. But all in all, the launcher, um, pretty good job on this. Um, so it feels pretty smooth on the MTK6582. But yeah, it's definitely not as smooth than on the LG G3. Now also the Android status bar here and all the quick settings here are modded to make it look like it would be on the LG G3. So here we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, data connection, airplane mode. So yeah, what the fuck? Then here we also have general auto rotation, lock timeout, quiet mode, and gesture entry. And regarding gestures, this phone is pretty good. So you can see the sensor works. Okay, just let me try it once again. You have to find the perfect distance to the sensor, but you can also recalibrate it. Now, I was really impressed that it detects properly left and right. So some other HTC S5, S4 clones had huge problems with that. But here on the LG G3 clone, it works perfectly nice, so you can go to the left or to the right, and it works really nice. 
Now basically that's the rest, so we just have here all the basic things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS and all that stuff. Now let's quickly have a look at the dial application. And just from the pictures I can say um, dial application just looks like on the real one. And sensors are working and we can also adjust the volume here with the rear touch buttons. And you can hear the speaker quality and yeah, speaker quality in my opinion not really good. But you will later also hear a speaker test of the smartphone. Now sensors working perfectly nice and yeah, basically that's the dial application and just make sure that the smartphone is working in your country. So there are frequencies and if you really have a clone or such a smartphone, you always have to make sure that it supports the frequencies of your provider. This is very important. Now, internet works okay, so um, I haven't had any issues with 3G, and also the 3G speed is pretty good on that phone, as you will see later in the speed test. So let's just quickly try to open up some web page like bbc.com, and here you can see that smart thing, so it's like smart pause or smart scroll, and this is definitely not working. I mean, for some reason, it's working, so it stops, but yeah, it stops at the wrong time. So if you're actually watching the video and also smart scroll, didn't work for me. But those features are very annoying and also on the Galaxy S4, I did hate those features. Now let's have a look at the flashlight and I have to say the dual LED flash on that device, very, very nice. And usually you get a very weak and also sometimes very yellow looking LED flash. But here on the LG G3 clone, it's outstanding. So it's very bright and also very white. So this is very nice. And this is not only a flashlight, so you can also use it if you want to capture photos in darker areas. So I'm pretty sure it will work good. But I've tested it and some of the photos had too much light. So also the software should be um, a little bit improved. Now that was the impressive flashlight and they should use exactly those LEDs on a lot of phones. Then here we have some other applications, also the battery calibration app, I've tried it with root access in CWM, but yeah, it didn't work and the battery lifetime really sucked. But now let's have a look at the camera application, because the camera is actually not that bad on this device. Also here the menu, apps and widgets, so this looks just like on the real LG G3. Now also the camera application is modded to make it look like the real deal, but yeah, it isn't. But the camera quality is quite okay for a clone. I had clones where the camera was a real piece of shit like on the iPhone clones. But on the LG G3, the pictures are actually usable. Now they are not really good, but they are okay. So let's just go outside and let's have some fun with the back camera. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so we're now here out of town. I just went out to show you my country, so this is near Vienna in Austria. And yeah, let's have a look at the camera of the LG G3 clone. Now it's very windy and very cold and the battery went dead during recording it. So this is really annoying and I just can show you half of the test. But you will see some samples and yeah, the camera actually feels pretty good. So it's not laggy at all. The tap autofocus, fast and accurate. So at least as accurate and fast as a $120 or $150 phone could be. Now. It feels pretty good, so it's not laggy or shaky, and the shutter also pretty fast without any lags. Now, as you can see, the camera application really looks like on the LG G3. So we have the back button, here we have the settings, which um, also look like on the LG G3, because here you can see the megapixels, and okay, already, now it went dead. And yeah, you cannot switch between 4 to 3 and 16 to 9, I guess. And I haven't seen the option to do this. And this is why all the sample photos are in 4 to 3 mode. But yeah, now you will see a back camera test and then a front camera test. So just sit down and enjoy. Alright guys, so here's a quick video test of the LG G3 clone back camera. And yeah, it looks a bit blurry on the smartphone. Let's see how it then looks on the PC. But the focus is surprisingly fast and accurate. So nothing to say about the focus here. And I think also close-ups look actually okay. But yeah, let's take it for a short ride and let's see how it performs. So there we go. And let's get it.
here you can see a quick front camera test of the LG G3 clone and I can't see how it looks right now because I'm driving but the focus um, when I took some selfies was pretty accurate but yeah the quality not that good but it's always not that good on those clones also on the iPhone clone from Live Mall it looked really strange but yeah let's see how it looks on the computer and let's just take it for a short ride So that was the camera test and as you've seen, the pictures sometimes look good, sometimes they're a bit blurry and you will find some samples down below in the description so feel free to download and check them for your own. Now let's have a look at the other applications here. So here are just some applications which I have installed like Facebook and all that shit. But here for instance we have the FM radio which works perfectly nice with the headset included. But yeah, the quality not that nice. Then here we can see Google Apps, so those clones come with Google Apps pre-installed. And this is really important because Google is blocked in China and you know, a phone without the Play Store really sucks. Here you can see Internet Security and you can see here your system is infected. But this is just because um, I did root it with iRoot and if you have the Chinese super user on your smartphone, then GData detects it as a virus or something. But yeah, um, let's just run another scan and then you can see the ROM is really clean. And this is really important because let me tell you a story. Now, um, the father of my girlfriend had a Note 3 clone. And yeah, he just went to work and in the work um, he used it in the Wi-Fi. And after one week um, the whole system got hacked and the IP was from China. And yeah, I mean it could be bad luck but it also could be malware or spyware on the smartphone. Now here we have the Play Store, as I've said before. This is the original Play Store, so no fake store or something. And you can download every application you want to. But yeah, just keep in mind the MTK65A2 is not that powerful, but it's also good for casual gaming, as you will see later. Supass so user, this little baby here, is rooted, and you can easily root it with iRoot. Now basically, that are all the apps here on the smartphone. It feels really quite snappy for the MTK65A2, but yeah, if you install more apps on the smartphone, if you have more apps on the home screen here, then it will maybe lag a bit. So the MTK65A2 is not that powerful and it's more in the lower end devices right now. Now, what I really like is that it supports double tap to wake up just like the real one. And also you can lock it with double tap. And this works perfectly nice on the clone. And personally for me it's really important that this is working because the buttons on the back side feel very cheap and yeah I really hate pressing buttons on the back side of a smartphone. But all in all it performs a bit better than most of the S5 clones which I have seen. But yeah quite okay for a clone I would say. And here we also have some other applications Twitter, YouTube, whatever. And yeah I would say let's do a quick movie test, then the GPS test and then some benchmarks and after this you will hear my conclusion about the smartphone. Alright guys, so let's do quickly the GPS test and there we go. The GPS test, I mean, yeah, it looks kind of fast. 11 satellites in view, 10 in use. I'm now connected to GPS as you can see right over here. And yeah, the signal bars actually here are not that good. So the accuracy will not go down under 10 feet, so it locks down to 12, 13 feet, which is actually okay. And the maximum signal 
level I've got is about 32 to 35, not more. But it locks to many, many satellites. So we have here 10 satellites in use. Yeah, um, on the new chipset I got um, so something like 22 and 17 in use. So GPS on the device is working. It's definitely okay. But yeah, um, the signal could be definitely better. So that is just because the MTK65A2 has not the best GPS and also the antenna layout on that smartphone is probably not the best one you, you will see on a Chinese smartphone. Alright guys, so here's a quick GPS test. And yeah, you can see GPS works perfectly nice. Also with a GPS here in the Google navigation application. And no jumps, no lags, even though the signal in the GPS test application was not that good. But here um, in the GPS applications so and navigation works actually pretty good. And yeah, so you can see here, pretty accurate. And this works kind of nice on the LG G3 clone. I didn't expect this because mostly on Galaxy S5 clones I've had, GPS was not working at all. It's a bit slow as you can see sometimes, but I think this is because of the internet connection, because I'm now outside of town and I just have here Edge. Alright guys, so that was the GPS test on the LG G3 clone. Alright guys, we're now at the end of this review and unfortunately Antutu Benchmark didn't work. I have reinstalled it and I just wanted to reopen it and then boom, crashed. Then I did clear the cache, I have removed everything, reinstalled, it crashes again. I have no clue why, there must be some firmware bug and yeah, I don't have the time to check this out. So just check out the Geekbench um, benchmark and there you can see also the real specs of this device. Now, yeah, just keep in mind, those products here are counterfeit. If you see something on the internet like this, which is that cheap, then yeah, you have to think about this. This cannot be the real one because it's so cheap. So it's just like buying a fake watch. Now, if the customs opens up your package and they see, hey, it's a clone, then boom, they will do the same what I will do after this review. So they will destroy it. Then the money is gone and yeah, you don't have a smartphone. 
So be really careful with this and always think twice when you buy something like this on the internet. And yeah, um, those devices are not that cheap at all, so I think they don't retail under $100. And this is also um, just something I want to tell you, you can get really good Chinese devices for something like $200. Like the new 64-bit phones which are upcoming right now, like the EQ E04 retails for only $190. This one here is legal, looks really nice and also has a pretty good performance. So yeah guys, just think twice when you see something like this. I hope you enjoyed it and sorry I'm really tired today, it's 3am right now. So I just wanted to finish this video and as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again in my next videos. So have a nice day and bye bye.